Today we are going to escape the back room. This is a crazy Robots, back Rainbow room Friends game where we the explore the back room. Oh, 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 this iconic piece of internet folklore has been a popular point of discussion for years now, with many absolutely falling in love with the concept. However, after the backrooms reached mainstream success, many people have fallen out of love with the concept and have grown to resent it. That's why today I'm going to take a look at the current state of the backrooms and truly pose the question of have the backrooms been ruined? To answer this question, we must look back on multiple different things that make people feel as though the concept has been ruined. It started off so simple. An eerie liminal space picture with no known origins. A creepy paragraph from a 4chan post accompanied it. This instantly captivated thousands of people and rapidly spread across the internet. People absolutely fell in love with this concept. It captured the fear and the imagination of thousands in a way that few things have. This love led people to start creating their own backrooms content. They started adding rules to the place, more details and ways to survive, and most importantly, entities. The original post basically mentions that there could be other things in the backrooms with you. The post ends with the phrase, God save you if you hear anything wandering around nearby, because it sure as hell has heard you. This haunting line inspired hundreds of people to wonder what else could be out there with you. And so, they created a bunch of different things. Entities among monsters, party goers, all these different things. And it kind of grew the lore of the backrooms and made people more interested in it. But at the same time, people felt as though adding things to the backrooms made it less scary. When it came to backrooms content online, it was mostly the backrooms wiki and random YouTube videos. And in my opinion, this was the best point of backrooms sort of lore and history because it wasn't oversaturated yet. And you'll see soon that it definitely becomes oversaturated. The backrooms became more and more popular. And for good reason. It's an incredible concept, and it's incredibly captivating. People were making their own animations of being trapped in the backrooms. They were making VR experiences, Gmod maps, all these different things that tried to capture the feeling of actually being in the backrooms. Where, in my opinion, nothing perfectly captured it, a lot of things did a really good job. Another thing that sort of started was the hunt for the original backrooms picture. Obviously, we have the picture, but we don't know where it's from or where it was taken. And the search has been going on for a while now. Unfortunately, it seems like we never really will know, but hey, maybe it'll pop up someday. I have no clue. However, it's likely to have been an old Sears building. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people just know the back rooms as the mono yellow wallpaper, damp carpet, and humbuzz lights, right? This soon became kind of boring to the fan base, so they made a bunch of different other levels. These could be places that you could no clip into or out of from the original back rooms level or from just in real life and all these different things. A lot of them were actually based off of old liminal space pictures and actually just given a story in some sort of context, which is smart. And look, that is great and all. But it made people start to feel sort of disenchanted with the back rooms, since it got kind of confusing. There are these different entities and ways to survive them. There were all these different types of levels of back rooms that kind of deviated a lot from the original ones. But regardless, it still continued to grow. This was around 2019, 2020, when it was still sort of obscure. This all changed on January 7th, 2022, when a certain someone by the name of Kane Pixels made a video by the name of The Backrooms found footage. This video changed everything. Kane Pixels went from an animator who worked on things that were based off of Attack on Titan and his own different short films, to absolutely capturing the entire internet, and making a video that expanded on The Backrooms, added more context to it, more levels, but did it in a perfect way that captured the vibe of the original image and the original idea so perfectly. But he didn't stop at just one video, he worked on a ton of different ones, creating an entire story and lore around it. And this is amazing. This is the way to go. It explains where the backrooms came from, different organizations trying to figure it out, and it introduced these hazmat suit guys, which are now a just staple part of backrooms imagery. Now, this is great and all, but unfortunately, it sort of led to the beginning of the end. But you might be wondering, how could this happen? I mean, why would something so good lead to a bad result? And the answer is oversaturation. But it's not as simple as just that, and we'll get into it. So there are some YouTubers on this platform, I'm not naming names here, but some people have very little integrity and will just kind of jump onto different topics and make videos about them even if they don't really understand the concept or the subject matter or even care about it in the first place. They do it just to make money. And a lot of the times, these people make videos for children. And they don't just make one video. 
Let's say you're a YouTube content creator, right? You make videos that are like gaming based, you make them to appeal to like, you know, Fortnite 12 year olds or, or even younger. Let's say like, I don't know, eight year olds, the Huggy Wuggy fans. You see this thing and it's big and people are talking about it. And so, hey, you wanna try it out yourself. You make one video about the back rooms and it blows the fuck up. Children around the world are watching your content, and some of them even believe that the backrooms is a real thing. So of course you're gonna make another video. I mean, hey, that's a shit ton of AdSense right there. You're probably getting sponsors in there. Money in the bank. So you make more, and more, and more, and more videos, until you've made more Backrooms content than Kane Pixels ever did. But the thing is, you're not a fan of the Backrooms. You don't care to read the wikis, you might not even know where it comes from. You just know that it's a money maker, and Kane Pixels hit it big. So you are too now. But the worst goddamn part about this is the fact that it ruins perception. When you have a bunch of little kids that are in this fandom now, they're obviously gonna wanna contribute themselves, and that makes total sense, I don't blame them. But, you know, they're little kids, so they may not have the best storytelling abilities or understanding of the source material. So a lot of their own expansions aren't very good, and sort of start to clog up the different wikis and sort of general aura of the backrooms. There are all these different little creatures and entities and like cartoon characters now that are roaming in the backrooms and ways to survive and drinks and foods and organizations and all these different things that, well, first off, aren't very well written, but also completely kind of miss the point of the original Backrooms image, and that is liminality and the fear of the unknown. I'd actually wager to say that this has something to do with human psychology. We are social creatures, right? And we don't like being alone. And this is why the Backrooms in its purest form works so incredibly well. It's the fear of the unknown and isolation. If you were thrown into a room out of nowhere that was ever expanding and never stopped, and all you heard was buzzing and seeing the same environments everywhere, you would go insane. And maybe you'd even start to imagine different entities and stuff like that, just because that's what your brain does. There's experiments that have been done where people just look into mirrors for a long time, and you could try it yourself. If you do it for enough time, you're gonna start to hallucinate, seeing parts of your face change, or seeing things behind you just out of the corner of your eye, because our brains don't like there being nothing. And that's why the backrooms hits so hard, on its purest level. But then, you take a bunch of different people who don't really understand this, or maybe they do, and they don't like it. They add monsters and enemies and ways to survive to kind of lessen the blow of how creepy the actual concept is. I'd wager to say that our brains would much prefer there being a crazy monster in the space over just being completely 100% alone and succumbing to our own brains and bodies. I would much rather be eaten by a big monster than go insane and starve to death, honestly. It, it, it feels like a better way to go out. When fans expand the backroom so much and lose the original identity, it's being overcomplicated but also dumbed down at the same time. A lot of the backrooms kind of has video game logic, where there's certain drinks that'll give you like super strength or ability to survive longer, stuff like that, which is just weird. Some things like almond water kind of adds to the liminal nature of it, because like what the hell is almond water? That's a weirdly uncanny drink but other things just make it feel off and kind of strange. But then you have those guys who make those like fake podcast clips for little kitties who just repeat this lore and basically cement it as canon in a lot of ways. Like, check this out. A new Backrooms level has been found. What? No way, really? Yeah, it's called level 2112. Wait, so what happens there? Well, there's this entity and they call him Orion. Whoa, what is he like? Well, he's this tall alien with a blue skin suit, red eyes, but even green skin. Wow, that sounds pretty scary. Oh, it gets even scarier. His level is like an underground Mars tunnel. What? Like the planet? Yeah, if he sees you walking around the level, he will literally unalive you. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> like Freddy Fazbear. But here's the thing. If you give him a picture of a goth woman with her boobs out, he'll transport you to level 1633. Yeah, you gotta make sure the picture is real gothy, real booby. It came to a point when around late 2022, the backrooms was in its worst state ever. It was being fully overrun by people who didn't really get it, and it was becoming super oversaturated and milked by everyone. This is what led me to make a video by the name of the backrooms have been completely ruined. And in that video, I made the point that the backrooms aren't scary anymore, and they've been ruined by children, basically, being in the fandom and content shifting towards them. The main enemy of the backrooms really arose here, and that is... children. 
Bear with me for a second. When something makes it big on the internet, its child fan base will sometimes ruin it. This is a lot due in part to the YouTubers who cover it, expose it to their young audiences, who then don't really grasp the concepts that are involved, and it ends up becoming really diluted, because then other YouTube children's content creators will make videos on this topic, with, for example, children's characters involved, or just some clickbait bullshit that kids are gonna watch, and then that's where more of their perception of whatever concept it is comes from, which then just waters it down and makes the entire thing a shell of its former self. But after reading a lot of comments and talking with people, I kind of disagree about that. It isn't the children themselves' fault, it's the way that YouTube works and how money-hungry people operate. I also don't really care as much, I got more going on than I did last year, so fake internet lore isn't as big a deal to me. But regardless, I still want to give my viewpoint. Blaming the children themselves isn't that fair, honestly, because we were all just like that. Honestly, a lot of us Gen Z kids were kind of the same way. We would latch on to whatever creepy internet thing there was and milk it dry. This is what happened to Creepypasta. Like, I don't know if anyone remembers, but back in the mid-2010s, people who were older who loved Creepypasta felt that it was ruined because of all the kids and, like, shippers and, you know, people who would draw Jeff the Killer as a cute emo boy in the fandom. And this is basically the same thing, just under different context. But now Gen Z is the older ones watching Generation Alpha do it, and it's kind of just a cycle, as many things are. But who should be held accountable and blamed are the YouTubers involved. People throwing Huggy Wuggy, uh, Rainbow Friends, Freddy Fazbear Among Us, whatever the hell is popular with kids, into the back rooms. A huge thing that has actually started to become a popular backrooms entity is Skibbity Toilet. Now, um, Skibbity Toilet is an interesting case. Um, people want me to talk about it and they want me to hate it, but honestly, Skibbity Toilet is pretty cool. Like, actually watch the series from part 1 to part 66 we're on as the time of recording. It's a pretty awesome story and the visuals are really cool. However, the content around it and the fan base is absolute garbage. It's some of the worst I've ever seen, honestly. There is so much crap. Skibbity Toilet as a series is solid, but everything around it that I've seen is complete and utter garbage, and I feel bad that kids are watching any of it in the first place. It's sort of the same thing that happened to this game by the name of Pizza Tower. It was kind of this WarioWare sort of game. I never played it, but I saw that it was popular for a while. And of course, like many things, it became a part of like Elsagate content and all that stuff. I'll talk about that uh, in a different video. But regardless, there was a lot of just trash kids content that was complete brain rot. And now, if you know me, if you know anything about me, you know that I have really strong feelings on YouTube children's content and how it should be and how it shouldn't be. And Skibbity Toilet is fallen straight into the how it shouldn't be sort of subgenre. It's all just like nothing content, it's all brain rot, it's all just completely nonsensical and provides nothing to the children watching it. There's no story, there's no nothing really, it's just sludge content. And it's infiltrated the backrooms because honestly, at this point the backrooms has become just a place to slap all your currently popular kids content characters into and then make shitty 3D animation videos with. And that's incredibly unfortunate. Honestly, with how high quality and how effort Kane Pixel's Backroom series is, I wondered, how does he feel about it? So I asked him, and this was his response. Everyone, welcome, Kane Pixels. So Kane, did you ever think there was a possibility for this series to get as popular as it is, to become the success that it's become? So I definitely saw that there was a possibility for it to gain traction. I definitely never would have imagined the numbers that we're seeing now with it or what it ended up being two three million views like that was sort of in the ballpark of what i was getting from the videos i was doing before that right because you're doing like the attack on titan yeah yeah, yeah. those are yeah. badass yeah so I, I was expecting like if it did well it could it could get in there but most of my fans or if you want to call them fans my subscribers at the time were attack on titan fans so i didn't like have a fan base who was there like specifically for me and my filmmaking. So I was guessing it could be anywhere from maybe 200,000 views to 2 million views. That's sort of the ballpark. So you you never yeah, expected yeah. it to reach like, four, what is it at? Like 44 Absolutely million? Absolutely not. I think it's at like 44 million. That's insane, like, man. That's crazy. It's absurd. It's abs <laughs> when it first came out, I was surprised to see all these comments of people telling me that this video is inaccurate and like, this isn't the backrooms, this is fake, this is wrong. You're doing the backrooms wrong. And I am like, huh. 
what? What are you what are you talking about? I'm doing the backrooms wrong? So I had no clue there was a phantom or a wiki or any of that stuff. I had no clue. All I was aware of was I I, I forget it's been a while now, it was back in 2019 that the original image with the cat June. It was like beginning of June I saw that in 2019. And my friends and I, just being people who frequent the internet, sort of picked up on it, found the memes compelling. It obviously was the sort of meme that it is funny when used right, but also more in like a an eerie way, sort of like how void memes be. It's like it's intriguing, but funny at the same time. It's like fascinating. Um, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. But I never at the time I didn't really think about it in the way of like this could be like a serious thing. Like again, I was younger. I was literally in eighth grade, so it's not like I was. Thinking wow. That way. But, right, right. In 2019. But, yeah. So I found it intriguing i guess i that sort of led into me going down the liminal space rabbit hole like slowly over the next few years it wasn't like a major obsession or anything right uh but i had definitely like been around the block seen all of like the major liminal space images that you see in the backrooms videos um and obviously it resonates with most people in my generation i would say exactly uh, yeah that's and this was during the whole like um the the oddly familiar pictures videos before the term liminal space yeah, was like that's, widespread that's, that's my main inspiration like those sort of things got me way more than any really that was my main yeah exactly like for me i you know i i think we're we're both I, i'm 18 you're, you're you're 17 right yeah 17. so we're, we're 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 close we we probably had a similar like you know experienced similar things during childhood and, and you know that whole liminal space concept is something that i'm fascinated in and then so to see it made um so so well done in in cgi through the backroom series like when it first shows the living room and then the uh the holiday inn hotel when i was first watching the video i was like oh oh this is like this is cool you know the thing i find interesting is the environment not the entities or whatever you want to call them right uh my series only has or has only identified the one which has been seen as maybe like a a total runtime of maybe like three combined minutes that it's even present. Oh, well, the, the bacteria yeah. guy, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and I don't even call it that, it has no name. Were you, were you like a fan of Wendigoon and, and obviously Nightmind and all these different YouTubers who came to cover yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. That must have felt amazing, you know? Um, MatPat too, that, that's one of the craziest like the ones first, to me. Yeah, the first couple months was just like, I mean, it's still insane now, like it hasn't gone away, it's, it's crazy, but like, in the beginning it was very, it was sort of shell shock. How long have you been doing, uh, like, CGI and VFX and all that stuff? I got into After Effects, uh, beginning of 2018. Okay. I, like, got my dad's After Effects license because he's in VFX on the game industry. Uh, there's not a lot, you, you would think that, like, I've learned stuff from him, but it it's, doesn't really cross over much. Maybe um, it's just something in the, in, sure in, in the blood. I'm sure had an influence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got the VFX artist gene. Exactly. Um, uh, so I started with that. I did a lot of really... Um, my stuff in the beginning wasn't great. And it's, it's still on my YouTube channel. It's just private. But it was, <laughs> right. I did a lot of mishmash videos. I made a lot of memes with After Effects. Even if it didn't look great in the beginning, right. still, I didn't care because I was younger. My yeah. standards was, were lower. So to me, I still thought it was awesome. Of course. And I thought it looked cool. Now looking back, not so much, but still I kept, it kept improving with that uh, sort of gill difference and until we get to the point where we are now where I, I'm, I'm still enjoying what I'm doing and it's, it's sort of reached where, I, where I've wanted it to be for a long time, I think. So from seeing your series essentially define the backrooms, like MatPat almost implied that you created it in a sense, in, in his video. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people angry about that. I, I have too. I, you know, I, I read all the comments that came to my video. People are fucking mean. It's, it's like, you know, there's, there's a lot yeah, of really I, nasty comments on there. People say, yeah, people say don't read the comments, but I, I read a lot of the comments. In my case, it's hard to complain because they're so positive. True, um, true. Which, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm in, I'm in the good graces of the internet, which is a fun feeling, but, you know, it, it it's the internet. It's very uh, black and white. Um, so, they're they like my stuff, but they're they're gonna hate on other things. And I think it's that sentence didn't make sense. Um, but yeah, they definitely are very divided. 
on the back rooms. There's a lot of different uh, angles to it. Yeah, it feels like the back rooms is formed out of like four different sub communities that all hate each other. Yeah, I, I, I just I think it's mostly young people, not to say children. I think it's mostly like teenagers and more on the younger end. Yeah, I, um, I think so too. In the end, you know, my video, the 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 back rooms ruined one, kind of falls into that category because I realized at the end of it. I don't have much of a solution. I'm just kind of like, well, kids took it over and I'm not really scared by it anymore. So that sucks. I think another thing I've noticed, and again, this is, I haven't really verbally spoken about this much. So I may be like wording out my thoughts as I go through this, but I, I find it interesting how people really treat the back rooms as this very solid, important thing. Like in a way, I don't think it should be. And I'm not sure if I'm expressing this the way I want to, but it feels like the idea that there's this original lore and like there's this, it's just, it feels so strict for something that has no bounds. Like the original concept, people like to treat as like the holy grail of backrooms. Like, oh, I wish- Right, I exactly. Just the 4chan post, post nothing else. The yeah. The, the 4chan post, while being cool, wasn't an exploration into anything beyond that it was a seed to other things but it's not like the creator of that post is we don't know who it is but like there's no guarantee that there's some like incredible writer who would be wanting to do a whole story like this or, or like expand on the idea it's just a really cool concept that but i just feel like people are very hard about all this generally i just think people take it way more seriously than they need to for something that I don't want to say it doesn't exist because everything that we can imagine exists in some way. Right. It's right. a fictional thing and it exists in, in that regard. But people get very caught up in it as if it's like a, a country or something. And I think that kind of caring for something so flexible, something that can be bent to the whim of just anyone is going to result in turmoil like this. Yeah, you want to read the 4chan post over and over again? <laughs> there you go, if you want to do that. Yeah, and that's that's something that I find really interesting, uh, the way that, that meme culture kind of plays into all of this. Um, and to me, you know, I love memes, I always have, but the way that they can be so quickly destroyed by people who don't understand them has always been kind of unfortunate. With the, you know, the example that I used in the video, it was like a lot of children's YouTubers who, uh, mm -hmm. with the back rooms, just like placed a bunch of bullshit in there purely because it would get yeah, views. Um, and, and that, you know, a lot of comments were pointing out, like, you know, why not just ignore that and um, just stick to what you do find entertaining about it. And for me, it's kind of, I don't know if it's just a, a me thing, but... To me, it's kind of hard to disconnect that, and um, I'm sure you've you've, you know, watched a lot of the memes and, and the stuff that people have made over your series. Does I've that tried, kind of bleed yeah, I've tried in? To limit myself. Okay, gotcha. I've tried to limit myself because I know the effect that that can have on my right. motivation to work on the series. Uh, the the memes don't bother me as much as like the the people who I don't want to say are trying to hijack my series because I don't think that's their intention, but the people who are very egregiously writing off the coattails of it. Yeah, I, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Very, very similar content. Yeah, yeah, very similar. Yeah. Um, so, from a creative perspective, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I can see what that would be very bothersome. There's not a lot I can do about it. What am I going to do, sue everyone who has involved themselves with backrooms? Like, that's true, that's true. So, I think from, to go off of that, I think a lot of the backrooms found footage like the strictly backroom stuff in my series has been riffed on a lot yeah but the the thing that i really treasure in the series is the the async component which yeah yeah it, it only it only works with the backrooms like it's it's two parts but i think that's that's the bit that i have sort of been pulling that comes from ideas i've had for a while so i feel like that's where that's what's going to give the backrooms more meaning as the story goes on so so no, no one else knows what I have in mind, so it's not as easy as just like perfecting the look as I've seen some people do. Uh, I've seen a lot of people try to just do what I'm doing, and I think honestly, just for everyone's sake, I, I, I think you should try to find your own ink to this. Like find, come up with something that uh, we haven't seen before and like give it your own meaning, I guess. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. And, and you know, it, it's kind of fascinating too, in the sense that there's kind of this 
take, taking the async and, and, and the hazmat guys as them being kind of like the mascots of the back rooms almost like yeah they've just become silly silly little guys running around yeah exactly like playing with clone troopers and and i don't know whatever other things yeah, they've it's become basically a giant internet sandbox, which is exactly. interesting in its own regard, but it detracts from the like the the very real, I guess, like niche feeling you got from it originally. Exactly. There was yeah. To really explain it. I'm sure, especially for you, it's it's your baby. These characters are your creation. Um, I imagine it can be kind of frustrating to have your work be that kind of um, I don't want to say perverted, but kind of like twisted in that way where it's yeah, just I feel that way yeah I feel I don't want to say like I almost slightly feel embarrassed to be like even like not that I would be wearing my own merch because this is weird but like that would be weird and like self-centered but I feel like I almost worry that like the average internet user is gonna get like that sort of childish connotation around my work like what happened to so many games and properties now that I don't know if it's worth mentioning them all but like the FNAF treatment because like that's I don't want to cater to the younger audiences. I'm not trying to lean into any audience for profit. I'm just trying to do the story I've been doing from the beginning. Yeah, that's the thing I've always liked about your videos, is they don't feel like they're pandering. You know what I mean? Like, so much of, yeah, especially yeah, indie horror, is, like, pandering to children and, like, MatPat now. Yeah, I think as it's gone on and it's less just backrooms wandering, ah, oh, scary monster, is there a scary monster? It's less of that. And I think I've definitely noticed the children in the comments decreased quite a bit because it's leaning more into a, a more uh, mature narrative. So in the missing people part, kids ate up kids because it's very easy to understand. People are missing. They're true, missing true. I can make missing posters of people and I can put creepy music over. Uh, I see. It's I see how like, that would be like the very simple, easy to understand. First, yeah, that's the first intro to the hazmat suits as well. So but more so it's now like uh, 1989 government bureaucracy and like all this cover-up stuff yeah i love that i love that whole like mk ultra sort of feeling to it how do you feel about different youtubers who aren't necessarily stealing your work but are are like like the kitty youtubers who will who will take the uh hazmat guys and the, the monster and and place them into like whatever stupid scenario that they put them in does that at all kind of like is it, is it like annoying or, or is it not really that big of a deal or, or you just feel kind of neutral about all of it i would like to say i feel neutral um i mean i if i could snap my fingers and make that all of that go away i absolutely would i don't right. like it at all i think it's just like you said in your last video it's just empty it's nothing and it, it's a largely child audience so it's not necessarily going to have any thoughtful commentary on it anyway so it's just serious is almost like nothing but it's a lot of nothing and that lot of nothing sort of contaminates the whole batch of backroom stuff out yeah there. yeah exactly and i feel like it just it warps the image of it and like i was saying it, it makes people get this idea that the backrooms and my series is like childish in a way even though i've tried as hard as possible to stay away from that notion i don't like it I don't blame the people who do it. I mean, I don't think they're kidding themselves into thinking this is some, they're making some masterpiece of cinema. Like it's most definitely for profit at this point. Yeah, I'd say, yeah you exactly. Keep doing Huggy Wuggy part 58. Like it's clear that there's no real creative intent there. So I don't blame them. People are just doing what, they're, what they've always been doing. Doesn't change the fact I'm not a fan. I remember when I was little, I was like trying to find the scariest stuff I possibly could when I was like, like I didn't have unlimited access to the internet as a kid, but like I was very interested in scary stuff out. So I was just like, in the time I did have, I would like, I was watching all like the top 10 scariest blank, whatever things for like watch mojo. Like obviously that's not the scariest stuff out there, far from it. But as a child, like in a child's world, it's very much, uh, a lot of stuff can be very compelling. So yeah, me, yeah, I probably would have been one of those kids into the back rooms, but it's interesting because I I was the same way as a kid. I, I I would. That's the reason the childhood trauma iceberg exists is because I watched all this stuff and um oh, you yeah, know of course. I was able to relate with it and stuff. But I I feel like a lot yeah like you said it, I we probably would be those kids who were like into the back rooms but not really getting it just because like monster and like people going missing and and all this stuff. Yeah, I, I of course too would like to think I was I would have been smarter than that, um, but it's hard to tell because at that age, as much as you want to think you're thinking for yourself, it's very easy to just. I remember being younger and totally, uh, no diss to Matt Pat here, but totally like 
believing most of his theories and taking Matt Pat's word as like gospel. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's it's game theory. What are you talking about? Yeah. Maybe Mario is a communist after all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Although although I, I I can I always had a, a slight uh, not grudge. Matt Pat's great. He he nominated me for the Streamy Award. He's awesome. We've spoken. He's great, but <laughs> I remember being little and like being like very annoyed about the portal. There are bodies in the companion cube theory because I was a hardcore portal fan. Basically, like there's no evidence for that. And I was annoyed that that's like one of the most popular portal video. That was funny. You know, I know for sure, like without a doubt, you're that the, that series is going to inspire so many people like, um, you know, I wouldn't be doing the videos that I do if it weren't for YouTubers that I watched, like uh, Scare Theater and Nightmare Expo and, um, you know, Rainbot and Blame It on Jorge, whoever, you know, all these different, all like... those guys. Yeah, exactly. They were the best. And, you know, still are when you know, they still make videos. We are officially on the flip side! Yo, what's up, bitch? With Yo, Raimundo! Yeah, but, um... You know, without people like that, they were so influential and their videos were so kind of special that I know they inspired me to no end. And, and so uh, it is really interesting the effect that your series is going to play on the future and, and, and even if it inspires like future filmmakers and stuff. Were you always interested in doing film or was that kind of something that came uh, later in life? I think as early as early as I could like understand the world, like, yeah, it's always been film for me. Obviously I wasn't picking up a camera when I was two, but pretty quickly that's that was sort of my path. I do have a lot of plans just generally speaking as a filmmaker. Uh, the series is very thoroughly planned out. Um, it's definitely the ending. Historically, whenever I've done a series, the ending is one of the first things I sort of, I come up with and I sort of almost work backwards from that in a way. Oh, um, interesting. Okay. Uh, there are some things you just can't anticipate, like certain budgetary changes happen, uh, good or bad, and they just change the trajectory of things. Right. And I, but I can say that like, from a general standpoint, the ending has not changed throughout the production on this series. It's not blurry, I know where it's going. Because I've, I've always loved when series, like, I've always found it strange that a series that, like, takes itself very seriously can, like, not know where it's going. You know, I'm surprised we're not seeing, like, Backrooms merch, like, you know, like, knockoff plushies and stuff yet. Yeah, Backrooms wallpaper shower curtains. Exactly, yeah. No, if you had, like, an identifiable I mean, I like, mascot, would you... they would be all over the place, honestly. Oh, well, I've gotten a lot of, uh, people wanting, like, companies coming to me wanting to make merch, and... Really? I'm not. That would be leaning into the, the, the kid side, too. Wait, what have they, what have they been wanting to do? Like, hazmat plushies, or... What yeah, kind of... like, hazmat the bacteria, stuff like that, and... Huh. I feel like that all is just, that's not right for the series. Yeah. And other things to be considered that I can't really talk about, but... Um, for the most part, I wouldn't want to do it even if I could. I mean, it makes sense people would want to start start capitalizing off of that, but if you go to, like, Chinatown in New York, there's going to be Among Us Poppy Playtime shit all over the place, and it's all, you know, knockoff thing. I think that hazmat suits have sort of been that. Like, there's been a huge influx in just hazmat su suit usage across, like, filmmaking YouTube. In the oh, really? Huh, like you've got you've got your own uh, subreddit and everything, you know, like yeah, that's that's uh, dedication there. No, it's it's I can't complain. Like there's nothing to complain about. They, they're very, very uh, kind. They love they love my work. But it's it's sort of become a running joke in like, the Discord server and really most of the community. How like all of the top comments on my videos or at least historically they have been commenting on how like Wow, Kane's 17. I can't believe he's making this, like, horror better than Hollywood at only 17. Guys, did you know Kane's 17? Yeah, I know. The age is a big, like, that's big talking very point. Positive. And, like, that's, I, it's been beyond amazing to have all of that, like, positive stuff coming my way. Uh, but it, it's also just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's funny in a way how it's almost not too much. Because, again, I feel weird saying that because it is a good thing. Everyone is, like, I'm thankful for that. Right. But at the same time, it's, you have to scroll down very far to find the theories and stuff like that. So, right, at a point, she's like, yep, yeah, I'm 17, we get it. <laughs> let's let's see yeah. something, something original. I, I, I see what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, this, it's been interesting speaking with so many people in the past year and finding out that like a lot of them are literally just within like three years of me. Right, yeah, it's it's weird how, how kind of young a lot of these people are. No, even you, I, I thought you were older. Yeah, I, I, look, I look a lot older than I am, <laughs> you know? I think it's probably because we grew up with 
horror on the internet, which makes me think, like we were talking about earlier, what is this next generation going to come up with when they're old enough? Yeah. People love to talk about how the next generation is going to be completely useless and not able to, it's just going to be stupid. Uh, they said it about, they've said that every single yeah, time. Yeah, every time. Well, does, even I can't help but feel like, I mean, I, I, I can't help but have feelings of like that towards some of the younger generations. Not seriously, but like, it's just a bias that every person yeah, has. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's like um, built in. But it'll happen. There'll be standout people who do things that are really cool, and that'll probably always be the case until we go extinct. Yeah, so. exactly. I'm, I'm excited to see it. I, I do think that Gen Alpha is kind of screwed, but it's not their fault because they grew up with iPads and, like, Elsa Gate. So. Yeah, that is, that is true. Like, the, the whole notion of it's, it might not necessarily be exactly the same as it's been in the past. Like people like to say how every generation says the same thing. Like, with the how tech has expanded in the last 10, 15 years, it might be somewhat truthful to say it is going to be a lot different with the younger generations now. Noticeably more. Developmentally, I, I'm i terrified yeah, to see what, you know, what ends up happening. Yeah, like, I, I, I know people who have, like, grown up with iPads and stuff their whole life, and it, they're definitely suffering for it. So yeah, yeah, I imagine. It's, it's a shame. Like, mental health-wise, but, like... Health -wise, so but, like but I feel like also, you know, horror that isn't mascot horror like huggy wuggy shit you know i feel like the kids that are into your stuff it will give them a better understanding of what makes things scary you know it's like what you're doing very helpful as well because it's like again people are very eager to like this is just a fact of how humans are they want to adopt other people's opinions yeah and in the age of the internet people making video essays about things that people like like this like your last one got a lot of it, it's definitely a topic people want to hear people talk about and when you present it in a convincing way like you have in a very like mild mannered sort of like acceptable viewpoint i mean because i mean you're not saying anything that's wrong going to persuade people into falling into that line of thinking which in this case i think is a good thing other cases it might not be in this case i think having people like you talking about these things in a more nuanced way will hopefully help people think about things in a nuanced way yeah, thank you, man. I, I appreciate it. And I think you're right. Yeah, you know, it's just like, uh, if people want to adapt opinions, it's best to have people who have uh, opinions that aren't necessarily the worst, you know? Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, like, I think also when people make stuff kind of exploring concepts and why they work and why they don't also kind of would help expand the understanding to the individual who's watching it too or it might be something they didn't notice in the past of like why something was was scary yeah. and why something might not work as well um like I, I saw lots of comments about both the original backroom stuff and and your stuff and the overarching theme of those is essentially that your series doesn't depend on the monster to be scary or to be unnerving uh where it uses kind of the same like vibe of the originals with with new additions and that's how the horror works instead of just relying on like a cheap jump scare essentially yeah and, and the plot the, the monsters or i don't i hate the word monster because it doesn't even make sense in my series since it goes from the scientific perspective but it's right, just a plot right. device yeah exactly and it's not like the focus where i think that's a much better way of of uh doing just horror in general um to make it more more thought-provoking and that's you know the, with the with the real life kind of government aspect of it too um yeah i think those are all my questions is there is there anything else that you'd like to add i think honestly i've gone through all the things i wanted to talk about here uh so i no i think i'm good but this is i really enjoyed this all right perfect thank you so much totally yeah it's been great talking Kane makes some absolutely incredible points here, and I completely understand how he doesn't want his content to be viewed as just kitty sludge because so much Backrooms content is. Imagine putting all this effort into your videos like he does, and then they get distorted and perverted and milked for money by people with very low integrity. Like he said, giving the Backrooms kind of a mascot like either the Bacteria Monster or the Hazmat Suit guys was something that really, really just led these people to have more content fodder. However, in that interview, Kane actually mentioned something. A project that he was working on but couldn't talk about yet, and it was big. Other things to be considered that I can't really talk about, but, um... That interview was done back in January 2023. Um, I've been sitting on this project for a long time. This project's taken a while to get out, and that's for a whole variety of reasons. But regardless, not too long after our interview, some really big news came out. And that was the fact that Kane Pixels was making a movie with A24 about the backrooms. And this is... Insane. First of all, 
He was 17 at the time. For a kid his age, and of his talent to be making a movie with A24 about the backrooms is absolutely incredible. And I love that I was kind of alluded to it all the way back then, and didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Honestly, when he told me that, I was thinking he was talking about maybe like doing a, um, a merch line or something like that, which I'm sure will come with the movie. But yeah, incredible stuff. This also means something big, and that is that the backrooms is no longer a niche internet thing. It's breached the mainstream. You can literally go to Hot Topic and see Backrooms merchandise, which is a really, really strange thing. They have a wall sometimes at certain Hot Topic stores that's just like current internet stuff. They've always had that, like literally since the mid 2000s. But it's just weird when it's like these current internet things. I don't know, but it's kind of cool. And now for a quick word from our sponsor, Scentbird. All right, check it out. Now we're gonna be talking about Scentbird and it's really- What the hell? Oh my god. Do you mind actually filming me real quick? I gotta do an ad read. Here, here, take this. You got me? Alright, so. This video is sponsored by Scentbird. So, Scentbird is a monthly fragrance subscription that sends you different types of scents, perfumes, and colognes, and of course, unisex ones, to give you a sample of the real thing. Because realistically, not many of us can afford actual high quality scents given the fact that many of them can run up to like $500 to $600. However, with Scentbird, you get these high quality scents only in trial forms to see if you really like them and you want to spend the big money on them. And now when I say big brands, I'm talking about like Gucci and Versace, but they also send out local brands as well, so you're supporting smaller businesses while also getting high quality products. It's really the best of both worlds. With Scentbird, you can be 100% sure that you're getting a high quality fragrance every single month. And the thing is, they actually last quite a while. What you get is about 30 days worth of use from each different scent that you get. This is what it would look like. It comes in these beautiful little tubes, and with magnets they come apart, so you can actually see what this is. From there, it clicks back in, spray it out, and you get your incredible scent. And this is some really, really good stuff. Now, I'm not really sure how long I'm going to be here, on account of the fact that it's uh, seemingly never-ending, but I can take solace in the fact that I'm going to smell freaking good while I'm here. Now, I actually use these products on a near day-to-day -day basis because it's amazing fragrance for a really inexpensive price. And um, let's just say people have hugged me and then stayed a little longer for a sniff. And You know, here's the deal. You can, you can judge all you want, but they smell that good. So use my code RAYMUNDO for 55% off your order, which totals to be about $17. This also makes a great gift during the holidays. If you don't know what to get someone, here you go. So once more, check out my code RAYMUNDO at Scentbird and get 55% off your order. Thank you very much for watching. All right. Thanks, buddy. Now, there are so many trash backrooms YouTubers, but there's one that's always lauded as the best, and that's a YouTuber by the name of Brugly. You've probably heard of him. He started off his YouTube channel just talking about the backrooms. Like, this man is a backrooms YouTuber. And he goes out and explains the different pieces of lore and how they fit into the overall story as part of the wikis. But weirdly enough, Brugley's content doesn't feel like it's pandering to kids or being overcomplicated. He's got a great way of explaining things, and you can tell that he actually cares about what he's talking about. He's got a unique mascot, fun videos, and honestly, it's just a good channel. So I was also really curious to actually ask him about this whole thing, and how he felt about the backrooms, and its current state. And, um, uh, this is Brugley, everyone. <laughs> so, uh, believe it or not, I'm taking a seat here with Brugley of <laughs> Backrooms fame. <laughs> Brugley the Backrooms boy. Brugley okay. the Backrooms bastard. Okay. <laughs> believe it or not, I took a seat with Brugley of Backrooms fame. What's up? There he is. The guy. He doesn't actually have five eyes in real life. Yeah, actually, they're under this hat. I do. I do have five eyes. That's true. I don't think I've actually seen him with this without the hat and once. I never will. So, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's proof. So, obviously, you're the backrooms guy. You know a lot about the backrooms. And, um, I've been openly critical about them, the current state of them in the past, and, uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on just kind of what there are, what they're like right now, as we speak. Do you think they're pr transformed in a good way, or in a less good way? Okay, so I think right now, as we speak, the backrooms is kind of healing. Okay. I think when you made your first video, I think it was kind of getting out of hand. I think a lot of people were going crazy with it. There was a lot of brands, a lot of companies making like kid stuff for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I think since that video and since that time, we've kind of taken a step back and realized we were kind of losing our way mm -hmm. from the, origin the originality of the original post 
the original lore. And I think I think the new things that have come out since then have been more driven based on the original facts, you know, liminality, right. loneliness, yeah. a monster here, or there, that kind of deal. And I think that that's probably better. You know, less less lore is good. It's good sometimes. And I think that on all the wikis, all the wiki, the wiki dot fandom, all the other ones, liminal archives. I think all of them are collectively getting better as we speak. And I think one of the main reasons that that's, that's happening is because of AI generated images. That's helping a lot, mm -hmm. helping people um, expand expand their, their lore. And I think that people are just, the, the, the critiquing stage is getting better for the lore that's getting added to the, to the back rooms. And that's that's my opinion on it currently. That's awesome. So I saved the back rooms. <laughs> yes. Uh, me, Raymond me and, uh, saved the back rooms. I guess me and Musi, we made videos saying, guys, this is. Why is, why is Poppy here? And then everyone said, you know it's what? It's healing now. You know what? We shouldn't do that. Now it's getting better. Uh, what about the back rooms really kind of inspires you? Like, what, what makes you like it as a concept so much? Is it more the liminality or is it kind of like the sandbox sort of like That's aspect? a good question. I think the liminality is definitely a part of it because yeah. I feel like that's such a weird feeling that no one can pin down why we have exactly. those feelings of liminality. And I think that the sandbox nature also adds the intrigue to a lot of people as well because exploring this this untapped world of potential also mixed with that liminality feeling just adds this whole like immersive experience that i think no other fandom besides maybe the scp universe uh brings to the table and the scp universe really doesn't have um the, like the found footage side of things like yeah. the backrooms has now the back uh Kane pixels has really revolutionized that and i think that's a huge a huge deal with with that kind of thing do you think also like with that aspect of the back rooms, do you think you could survive? Given your knowledge, do you think you'd have a chance? Oh, dude, I, I could solo it. I could easily do it, I think. I think every I level or every you single one of them. I've, I've developed all the knowledge possible. My brain is okay. expanding as we speak. The veins in my forehead are popping out. I, I could easily you do You can't this. see it, but it's happening. Yeah, right I know the hat, the hat hides it for hat sure. Because uh, that, that would probably freak people out. But I could do it easily. You, br you bring a camera, you're like, oh, this is the best clout I will ever get. <laughs> yes, the boys back home will not believe this. No, nope, you know? they it's, will it's, not. It's, it's that kind of thing. If sure. that were to happen, people would just think it's an incredible found footage video. It would be a good video, Which actually. is, which is... Don't beat me to it, Kane. Don't I'm gonna do it. Kane, if don't watching throw this, Brugley into the back I'm rooms. gonna do it first. You're not gonna do it, <laughs> for sure. Do you have any really strong opinions on them, or is it just kind of fun to you? I personally think it's just really fun to, to read into. Yeah. I, I don't really subscribe to the fact that people have these really, really strong opinions on, on things like, man, right. you can't have that, man. Like, dude, it's all at the end of the day, it's collective fiction. Yeah. Fiction means not real. So people are just having fun. And I think that's a huge thing. You just gotta have fun sometimes. Let loose, Let, yeah. get light. Don't, don't take everything so seriously, especially online lore for things that aren't real. That's, That's very true. Message from Papa Brugley right there. Papa Brugley. Seriously. Yeah, what do you think about the people who, who do get really angry on both sides of the spectrum? Those who, um, you know, are, are super loyal to the original 4chan posts and those who are super much in favor of, um, you know, putting whatever the hell they want and people, you know, getting mad when people don't want them to just add whatever they want into the... I, I can see things. both arguments in, in certain lines, but obviously I think if you take anything to the extremes, that's when it gets bad. Yeah. But I can yeah. see the, the original people, they want the liminality. And like I said, I think it's kind of healing towards mm -hmm. that way. And the people that, that want to add their own thing, you can do that too. Just make sure it's in a way that makes sense. Don't right. just you can't just force it like a square a square thing into a, a circle hole. You can't you can't do that. Um, just just make sure that it's it's not too crazy and make sure that it's not too bare bones. I also think that there's people that believe that the back rooms is just level zero, and I think well that would be kind of boring if it was just level like just yellow walls. That's not fun. We got to make things more fun, but we also can't you know, lose sight of the, the main you goal. Can't overdo it. Exactly. Yeah. And there's there's a balance. There is. Like what is out there? The final line in the original post. That line is is chilling. And the thing is, is that for me, it's kind of like wondering what's out there and possibly nothing being mm -hmm. out there. Like I'm imagining realistically, if I'm just in this infinite area, I start to hallucinate. Yes. I yes. start to make uh, you know backrooms creatures in my mind mm -hmm. uh, that. Probably aren't actually, you know, there. I think yep. it's the insanity and not knowing how long you've been there and the dehydration and starving. Yes. Like, that is what I find genuinely... I think, I think we as humans, we fear things that we don't really understand. Exactly. And yeah. if we have these, these spaces, these liminal spaces, these, these backrooms levels that we don't know what's there, and there's things that are there that we don't know, that makes it even scarier uh, to the point where it's... 
it just it just terrifies you down to the bones. Yeah, I yeah. I think that if everything is just is empty and you're just, I mean, it's pretty much just a, a death sentence. Like you're yeah. you're gonna you're gonna die. And you're, you're gonna, gonna die. Alone. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just gonna be you and your mind going crazy until you starve. Exactly. So the, adding adding these other physical entities and creatures that live there, it adds a whole new thing of like, well, you could survive here, but that in and of itself is like. A hellscape. Yeah, it is hell. Exactly, pretty it much. Is, yeah, you're trapped, barely surviving, but still surviving because these other creatures can survive as well. And that's like the worst of the torture. And that's the, the worst that of you're, it. You're kept barely you're alive. You're still alive. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what it is for me. See, that's actually kind of cool. Uh, sort of like punishment hell zone with the back rooms proper. Do you think the space will ever be found, or do you think it's long gone? I, I think it'll never be found. Yeah, I'm kind of with you there. I think it will never be like, found. if it does, I want it to be found. To be clear, same, but, same. I don't think it's going to happen just because, like, probably demolished. Yeah, I think what happened was, I think the building was being demolished, gutted, probably stripped down to the bare yeah. bones. Some random person took a picture, maybe even to send to, like, one of their friends or coworkers or something, yeah, saying, whoa, yeah. look at this picture. And they don't even care about the internet. They might be no, like a 50-year-old yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. They have no idea. Imagine, do, do you think the original 4chan OP has any idea? I, th I think they know, Okay. but I think they're one of the things, like, if I say it's me, no one will believe me. True, true. Yeah. Yeah. So Brugley is 410 OP, maybe confirmed, possibly. real and confirmed. Wow, you already hear full first. Wow, folks. only here, here on the Raymundo 2112 YouTube Very channel. Exclusive. This is the guy who made the back rooms. Does it come to, <laughs> as a shock to you? Because it should. It should. Because I'm I'm him. Uh, you know, Ken Pixels has his the, his movie coming out, coming up. which is crazy. Uh, let me be in it. Anyways. <laughs> um, that, I think if they do it right, yeah, it'll be horrifying. Almost like a horror movie. Yeah, this is a stupid question, but do you think there's any chance the back rooms are real? Does any part of you believe that there is I Honestly, I kind of wish it was, to? because that would be like, that would explain a lot of the disappearances that we have in, the, in a less yeah. like, a scary way. You national know? parks, that's the word, that's where you- uh, Why do national parks yeah. exist where they exist, people? Exactly. Answer me that and I will stop believing in the back rooms. Boom. Okay? <laughs> there you go. There's yeah. no reason for hundreds of thousands of people to go missing in parks. There is. I'm telling you, that. I've been there. He's There's been not there. a reason. What's the actual reason? Back rooms. That's Honestly, the back rooms and, and stairs in the woods. Both. The yeah. stairs that lead to the back rooms. Dude. I'm Brooklyn, the back rooms is not ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brooklyn, the back rooms are real. <laughs> they're real. I swear it. I swear they're real. I've been uh, there. I've, yeah, what do you think is like a healthy level of taking the back rooms seriously? <laughs> I, just right in the middle. No, it's right. like it's like the porridge is not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gold, it's Goldie, what is it? Goldilocks. Goldilocks, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you can't have too hot, you can't have too cold, you have to have the middle. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah, That's... Yeah. Meditate on that. Um, for those who feel as though the back rooms have been ruined for them because they've seen so much just like, you know, like kitty trash on, yeah. on YouTube and stuff, yeah. do you have any advice for them to kind of reinvigorate their love for it? Or yeah. do you think that's kind of just like... You know? I would say make sure to recheck all the wikis um, that you've seen before because mm -hmm. like, you might have this preconceived notion that it's all trash. Well, it's actually... they've. They've redone a lot, right? Or fixed a lot, got rid of a lot, fixed up a lot, to where it's now a much better structure on all of them. And it's just way easier to read, and it's way more immersive. Um, and it's not just random splatter on a wall now. It's actually like cohesive stuff. That's cool. And it's it's gotten so much better, especially in the past like three months. And if you haven't checked it out in the last three months, you should definitely do that. So like, give it another shot. Ma yeah, give it another shot, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Do you think any like kids channel grifters have a place in the back rooms? No, all? no, okay. I don't think so. Yeah, definitely yeah. not. I think you shouldn't be a cash grab. You should, if you actually like the lore, then talk about the lore. Don't don't try to exploit people. It's just e throw a bunch of little characters in the level zero and call it a day. Yeah, that's, that's not that's not what that's you not do. that's not what it is. Okay, no, that's definitely not what it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I respect that. Yeah. 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 I think that's about it. All right. Thank you very much, yeah. Brugley. Thank you for having me on. Of course. So after talking with Brugley, I really came to see where he was coming from. A lot of people take this stuff way too seriously, and that's not saying that it's wrong to care about internet stuff, but it really isn't that big of a deal at the end of the day. And honestly, as he implied, if the backrooms never changed and evolved, it would be irrelevant and people would get bored with it. Because there's only so much that you can do with, you know, a bunch of yellow walls. It's a fantastic concept, but, you know, once people know about it, that's kind of it. If it never changed and evolved, it would really just kind of die off. You may argue that that's for the better, but honestly, 
I, I don't know. But that's not to say that the current state of the backrooms is good, because speaking completely honestly, I still don't like it. It honestly feels very similar to what happened to the SCP Foundation, which is another big piece of internet folklore, right? Uh, initially, it started off with all these different cool, like, entities and monsters that this foundation collected and documented online, and a lot of the stories in the SCP Foundation felt very real and very genuine and honestly were really creepy at times. However, there came a time when every SCP was just something random, and honestly, weren't even creepy anymore. Like, one of my favorite SCPs, because of just how random it is, is one of those Duncan Alien Skee-Ball games. Yeah, that's an SCP. Now, um, apparently. This is kind of the same thing that happened with Backrooms entities in different Backrooms levels. It all kind of just became the same thing because when everyone can write lore, it just becomes a mess. However, like Brugley said, my viewpoint is a lot of what it was like nearly a year ago in 2022, whereas things have gotten a lot better and they've cleaned up the moderation on the actual Backrooms wiki. But regardless, my view of the Backrooms is forever tainted. Many, many people argued in the comments of my prior Backrooms video that I should still be able to enjoy the Backrooms and just ignore all the cringe stuff, right? Like, just because bad stuff exists doesn't make the whole thing bad, right? And to an extent, that makes sense, okay? I see where they're coming from. However, maybe it's just my brain and how it works. Once I see enough of something being made stupid and, like, kitty, I can't take it seriously anymore. Like, it's hard to look at the back rooms and not see Skibbity Toilet there, to not see Huggy Wuggy there, to not see an Among Us creature in the back rooms there, you know? Even the original picture doesn't feel as creepy as it once did because of all the shit that I've seen, all the garbage content that has been fed into my eyeballs by making these videos. It just doesn't feel scary anymore. It sucks to look at the back rooms and see it as a template to have Boyfriend from Friday Night Funk in Skivity Toilet, Grimace running around, Huggy Wuggy, Freddy Fazbear, or whatever the hell is in there being there. And I've tried so hard to like get that out of my mind and forget it and just try to enjoy it for what it is, but I can't really do it anymore. The back rooms have been ruined, but only really for me. But that's not to say that the back rooms have been completely ruined because that's just my viewpoint. I think something like the backrooms can't really be completely ruined, on account of the fact that it goes back and forth in different ways, right? Like Brugley mentioned, there are good times in the fandom and there are bad times. There are times when there's really good content coming out, golden ages, and then there are droughts when it's all crap. Like, having bad content doesn't mean that it can never recover and become cool again. If most people can look at the backrooms even after seeing crap content and still find it scary, that's awesome. And that's proof that it isn't actually ruined. It's sort of the same as analog horror, right? A lot of people feel like analog horror has been ruined because a lot of it is just repetitive and the same and really not scary anymore because it uses the same tropes that have been a thing for years now. And for a while, I agreed with that until I thought about it a little further. Um, I have a little video on that. If, if you want to check it out, feel free. It's, uh, it's a good video. But yeah, it's definitely a nuanced topic. So the backrooms has been ruined for me, but not for everyone. Something that strikes me as interesting about the backrooms is how much of an internet gathering it really is, and I find there to be something really special about that. Few things have really captivated the internet worldwide like the backrooms has, right? And I find that really, really cool, and a great example in unity. The world is incredibly, incredibly divided. So whenever there's something that really unites people, like the backrooms, I actually really like that. I think that's a really cool thing. It's kind of like the unity that alternative people often feel with each other. Like, I know a good few of you out there are, are emo or goth or alt in some way. You know when you're out in an area and you're like dressed up to represent your subculture and you see someone else who also is and you just kind of give each other that look of like, I got you, you got me and often be like, hey, nice fit. Look, it's, it's, a, it's a very specific thing, especially if you're somewhere like Disney World, those people feel like family to you, all right? I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of how it feels. And the Backrooms is a similar example of that, only online. So to really conclude this video, I want to make the point that the Backrooms have changed quite a lot. It's not 2019 anymore. Things are very, very different, but that's okay. It's good for people like me to kind of be able to just let go of the things that we loved and let other people enjoy them in their own ways, even if we don't necessarily like them. So, that wraps it up for my video on the backrooms. I want to give a huge thank you to Brugley and Kane Pixels for being a part of this, and of course, 
to Setbird for sponsoring it. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's definitely my longest video in a really, really, really long time. And I'm, I'm proud to have that because I like having long videos. I think it's I think it's cool. I want this video to be kind of a point of discussion for people. So if you want to share your thoughts and opinions in the back rooms and what I think of them, please do because honestly, this video exists because of people sharing their thoughts and opinions about the back rooms. Another thing too is that I want to kind of set a like goal. And this is the first time I've ever done this because I think it's kind of cringe and I don't like it. But if you're interested in seeing another video on the back rooms where I talk to the creator of the party goers, get this video to 25,000 likes and I'll make it. I also want to give a big thank you to my fellow Brain Rock Gamer. Me? Yeah, you. Oh, my oh bubble wrap. Yep. Oh! She made the, the whole Built by Gamers thing possible and it was funny and I'm sure you laughed. Um, I also want to say one more thing. Since it's almost Christmas, you should get yourself a plushie. Forty dollars. I love see. mine so much. I sleep with it every single night. That's true. Literally every single. I can't sleep. I can't sleep without it. Yeah, his forehead's I like really... kind of discolored. It's... Yep, because I go. Mm. Yeah, which is a very sweet thing. I'm gonna and if fall. You want to do that too. The arms, they're articulated. You see, they stay where you put them. Oh my gosh! Super high Just quality. Like the real thing. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So check it out in the link below. I've been Raymundo2112, you've been a great audience. Thank you again to Brugley, Kane Pixels, and Scentbird, and I'll see you all in the next video where I talk about the dark side of Disney parks. See you then, happy holidays, and also, good night.